What are some environmental advantages to recycling electronics? Recycling 1 million desktop computers prevents the release of greenhouse gases equivalent to the annual emissions of 16,000 passenger cars. Recycling 1 million laptop computers saves the energy equivalent to the electricity used by 3,657 U.S. Homes in one year. Recycling the 414,000 tons of electronics that were collected in the United States in 2007 prevented the release of greenhouse gases equivalent to the annual emissions of more than 178,000 cars. One metric ton of circuit boards can contain 40 to 800 times. The concentration of gold ore mined in the United States. One metric ton of circuit boards can contain 30 to 40 times. The concentration of copper ore mined in the United States. Recycling 1 million cell phones could recover 7,500 pounds, 3,402 kilograms of gold which could be used in new products rather than having to mine more gold. National Park Service Established The National Park Service was created by an act signed by President Woodrow Wilson. 1856-1924, on August 25, 1916. Its responsibility was to administer national parks and monuments. How much has recycling of municipal solid waste grown since 1960? In 1960 the recycling rate was 6.4%. It has grown to 33.2% in 2008. On average, Americans recycled and composted 1.5 pounds. 0.7 kilograms of our individual waste generation of 4.5 pounds, 2 kilograms per person per day. How much electronic waste is generated in the United States? Electronic waste, e-waste, consisting of TVs and other video equipment. Computers and assorted peripheral equipment, audio equipment, and cell phones. Accounts for less than 2% of the total municipal solid waste. However, the amount of electronic equipment that is generated is increasing steadily. The National Safety Council study of 1998 estimated that 20 million computers became obsolete. Just seven years later, in 2005, the EPA estimated 26 to 37 million computers became obsolete. More recently, in 2007, the EPA estimated the number of computers that became obsolete had doubled since 1998. Furthermore, the Consumer Electronics Association estimated 304 million electronics were removed from U.S. households in 2005. In 2007, approximately 414,000 tons.
375,574 metric tons, of electronics were collected in the United States for recycling. When was the first curbside recycling program established in the United States? The first municipal-wide curbside recycling program was started in 1974 in University City, Missouri, where city officials designed and distributed a container for collecting newspapers. As of 2008, there were 8. 659 curbside recycling programs serving 59% of the total population in the United States. The three steps are, collection and processing of recyclable materials use of Recyclables by industry to manufacture new products Consumer purchase of products Made from recycled materials What is the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act? In 1976, the U.S. Congress passed the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, RCRA which was amended in 1984 and 1986. This law requires the EPA to identify hazardous wastes and set standards for their management including generation, transportation, treatment, storage, and disposal of hazardous waste. The law requires all firms that store, treat, or dispose of more than 220 pounds, 100 kilograms of hazardous wastes per month to have a permit stating how such wastes are managed. When did aluminum recycling begin? Aluminum recycling dates back to 1888 when the smelting process was invented. Since aluminum is so valuable, companies involved in manufacturing aluminum were motivated to discover ways to make aluminum from aluminum. Recycling aluminum saves 95% of the energy required to Make new aluminum since it eliminates the mining of new ore. It is estimated that 73% of all aluminum ever produced is still in use. What state was first to create mandatory deposits on beverage containers? In 1971, the state of Oregon was the first to create legislation mandating deposits on beverage containers. The deposit was 5 cents per container. What are the uses of discarded tires? During 2007, 4,500 and 96,000 tons of tires were scrapped in the United States. Nearly 90%, or 4,106,000 tons, of tires were sent to one of the three major markets for scrap tires tire derived fuel, ground rubber applications, and civil engineering. 
tire derived fuel tdf accounted for 54 percent or 2484 thousand tons of the scrap tires generated tdf is used in a variety of combustion technologies including cement kills pulp and paper mill boilers utility and industrial boilers the TDF market is expected to continue to grow. Ground rubber applications, including new rubber products, playground, and other sports surfacing. And rubber modified asphalt, consumed 789,000 tons, 17% of the total, of scrap tires. Another 562 tons, 12% of the total, of tires were used in civil engineering applications. These include tire shreds used in road and landfill construction. Septic tank leach fields, and other construction projects. An additional 594,000 tons of tires were sent to landfills in 2007. Tires may be disposed in either a landfill or a monofill, a separate landfill only for tires. In certain areas of the country, especially in the western states, landfills are a more efficient option than other scrap tire markets. Landfills are also the only option for tires that are in such poor condition they are not candidates for the scrap tire market. Furthermore, landfills are an important disposal option for the residue and byproducts from tire shredders. What was the typical lifespan of dinosaurs? The lifespan has been estimated at 75 to 300 years. Such estimates are educated guesses. From examination of the microstructure of dinosaur bones. Scientists have inferred that they matured slowly and probably had proportionately long lifespans. What was the typical lifespan of dinosaurs? The lifespan has been estimated at 75 to 300 years. Such estimates are educated guesses. From examination of the microstructure of dinosaur bones. Scientists have inferred that they matured slowly and probably had proportionately long lifespans. How does a mastodon differ from a mammoth? Although the words are sometimes used interchangeably. The mammoth and the mastodon were two different animals. The mastodon seems to have appeared first, while a side branch may have led to the mammoth. The mastodon lived in Africa, Europe, Asia, and North and South America. It appeared in the Oligocene epoch. 25 to 38 million years ago and survived until less than 1 million years ago it stood a maximum of 10 feet 3 meters tall and was covered with dense woolly hair its tusks were aligned straight forward and were nearly parallel to each other 
the mammoth evolved less than 2 million years ago and died out about 10,000 years ago. It lived in North America, Europe, and Asia. Like the mastodon, the mammoth was covered with dense, woolly hair. With a long, coarse layer of outer hair to protect it from the cold. It was somewhat larger than the mastodon, standing 9 to 15 feet, 2.7 to 4.5 meters. The mammoth's tusks tended to spiral outward, then up. The gradual warming of Earth's climate and the change in environment were probably primary factors in the animal's extinction. Early man killed many of them as well, perhaps hastening the process. How does a mastodon differ from a mammoth? Although the words are sometimes used interchangeably. The mammoth and the mastodon were two different animals. The mastodon seems to have appeared first, while a side branch may have led to the mammoth. The mastodon lived in Africa, Europe, Asia, and North and South America. It appeared in the Oligocene epoch, 25 to 38 million years ago. And survived until less than 1 million years ago. It stood a maximum of 10 feet, 3 meters, tall and was covered with dense woolly hair. Its tusks were aligned straight forward and were nearly parallel to each other. The mammoth evolved less than 2 million years ago and died out about 10,000 years ago. It lived in North America, Europe, and Asia. Like the mastodon, the mammoth was covered with dense, woolly hair. With a long, coarse layer of outer hair to protect it from the cold. It was somewhat larger than the mastodon, standing 9 to 15 feet, 2.7 to 4.5 meters. The mammoth's tusks tended to spiral outward, then up. The gradual warming of Earth's climate and the change in environment were probably primary factors in the animal's extinction. Early man killed many of them as well, perhaps hastening the process. Why did dinosaurs become extinct? There are many theories as to why dinosaurs disappeared from Earth about 65 million years ago. Scientists debate whether dinosaurs became extinct gradually or all at once. The gradualists believe that the dinosaur population steadily declined at the end of Cretaceous period. Numerous reasons have been proposed for this. Some claim the dinosaur's extinction was caused by biological changes that made them less competitive with other organisms. Especially the mammals that were just beginning to appear. Overpopulation has been argued. As has the theory that mammals ate too many dinosaur eggs for the animals to reproduce themselves. Others believe that disease everything from rickets to constipation wiped them out. Changes in climate, continental drift, volcanic eruptions, and shifts in Earth's axis. Orbit and slash or magnetic field have also been held responsible. 
the catastrophists argue that a single disastrous event caused the extinction not only of the dinosaurs but also of a large number of other species that coexisted with them. In 1980, American physicist Luis Alvarez, 1911-1988, and his geologist's son, Walter Alvarez, 1940, proposed that a large comet or meteoroid struck Earth 65 million years ago. They pointed out that there is a high concentration of the element iridium in the sediments at the boundary between the Cretaceous and Tertiary periods. Iridium is rare on Earth, so the only source of such a large amount of it had to be outer space. This iridium anomaly has since been discovered at over 50 sites around the world. In 1990, tiny glass fragments, which could have been caused by the extreme heat of an impact, were identified in Haiti. A 110-mile, 177-kilometer, wide crater in the Yucatan Peninsula, long covered by sediments, has been dated to 64.98 million years ago, making it a leading candidate for the site of this impact. A hit by a large extraterrestrial object, perhaps as much as 6 miles. 9.3 kilometers wide would have had a catastrophic effect upon the world's climate. Huge amounts of dust and debris would have been thrown into the atmosphere, reducing the amount of sunlight reaching the surface. Heat from the blast may also have caused large forest fires, which would have added smoke and ash to the air. Lack of sunlight would kill off plants and have a domino-like effect on other organisms in the food chain, including the dinosaurs. It is possible that the reason for the dinosaurs' extinction may have been a combination of both theories. The dinosaurs may have been gradually declining, for whatever reason. The impact of a large object from space merely delivered the final devastating blow. The fact that dinosaurs became extinct has been cited as proof of their inferiority and that they were evolutionary failures. However, these animals flourished for 150 million years. By comparison, the earliest ancestors of humanity appeared only about 3 million years ago. Humans have a long way to go before they can claim the same sort of success as the dinosaurs. Why did dinosaurs become extinct? There are many theories as to why dinosaurs disappeared from Earth about 65 million years ago. Scientists debate whether dinosaurs became extinct gradually or all at once. The gradualists believe that the dinosaur population steadily declined at the end of Cretaceous period. Numerous reasons have been proposed for this. Some claim the dinosaurs' extinction was caused by biological changes that made them less competitive with other organisms. Especially the mammals that were just beginning to appear. Overpopulation has been argued. As has the theory that mammals ate too many dinosaur eggs for the animals to reproduce themselves. Others believe that disease everything from rickets to constipation wiped them out. Changes in climate, continental drift, volcanic eruptions, and shifts in Earth's axis. 
orbit, and slash or magnetic field have also been held responsible. The catastrophists argue that a single disastrous event caused the extinction not only of the dinosaurs but also of a large number of other species that coexisted with them. In 1980, American physicist Luis Alvarez, 1911-1988, and his geologist's son, Walter Alvarez, 1940, proposed that a large comet or meteoroid struck Earth 65 million years ago. They pointed out that there is a high concentration of the element iridium in the sediments at the boundary between the Cretaceous and Tertiary periods. Iridium is rare on Earth, so the only source of such a large amount of it had to be outer space. This iridium anomaly has since been discovered at over 50 sites around the world. In 1990, tiny glass fragments, which could have been caused by the extreme heat of an impact, were identified in Haiti. A 110-mile, 177-kilometer, wide crater in the Yucatan Peninsula, long covered by sediments has been dated to 64.98 million years ago, making it a leading candidate for the site of this impact. A hit by a large extraterrestrial object, perhaps as much as 6 miles. 9.3 kilometers, wide, would have had a catastrophic effect upon the world's climate. Huge amounts of dust and debris would have been thrown into the atmosphere reducing the amount of sunlight reaching the surface. Heat from the blast may also have caused large forest fires, which would have added smoke and ash to the air. Lack of sunlight would kill off plants and have a domino-like effect on other organisms in the food chain, including the dinosaurs. It is possible that the reason for the dinosaurs' extinction may have been a combination of both theories. The dinosaurs may have been gradually declining, for whatever reason. The impact of a large object from space merely delivered the final devastating blow. The fact that dinosaurs became extinct has been cited as proof of their inferiority and that they were evolutionary failures. However, these animals flourished for 150 million years. By comparison, the earliest ancestors of humanity appeared only about 3 million years ago. Humans have a long way to go before they can claim the same sort of success as the dinosaurs. How did the dodo become extinct? The dodo became extinct around 1,800. Thousands were slaughtered for meat, but pigs and monkeys, which destroyed dodo eggs, were probably most responsible for the dodo's extinction. Dodos were native to the Mascarene Islands in the central Indian Ocean. They became extinct on Mauritius soon after 1680 and on. Reunion about 1750. They remained on Rodriguez until 1800. How did the dodo become extinct? The dodo became extinct around 1800. 
Thousands were slaughtered for meat, but pigs and monkeys, which destroyed dodo eggs, were probably most responsible for the dodo's extinction. Dodos were native to the Mascarene Islands in the central Indian Ocean. They became extinct on Mauritius soon after 1680 and on. Reunion about 1750. They remained on Rodriguez until 1800. When did the last passenger pigeon die? At one time, 200 years ago, the passenger pigeon, Ectopis migratorius, was the world's most abundant bird. Although the species was found only in eastern North America. It had a population of 3 to 5 billion birds, 25% of the North American land bird population. Overhunting caused a chain of events that reduced their numbers below minimum threshold for viability. In the 1890s several states passed laws to protect the pigeon, but it was too late. The last known wild bird was shot in 1900. The last passenger pigeon, named Martha, died on September 1, 1914, in the Cincinnati Zoo. In a span of just 200 years the passenger pigeon passed from the world's most abundant bird species into extinction. When did the last passenger pigeon die? At one time, 200 years ago, the passenger pigeon, Ectopis migratorius, was the world's most abundant bird. Although the species was found only in eastern North America. It had a population of 3 to 5 billion birds, 25% of the North American land bird population. Overhunting caused a chain of events that reduced their numbers below minimum threshold for viability. In the 1890s several states passed laws to protect the pigeon, but it was too late. The last known wild bird was shot in 1900. The last passenger pigeon, named Martha, died on September 1, 1914, in the Cincinnati Zoo. In a span of just 200 years the passenger pigeon passed from the world's most abundant bird species into extinction. What is the difference between an endangered species and a threatened species? An endangered species is one that is in danger of extinction. Throughout all or a significant portion of its range. A threatened species is one that is likely to become. Endangered in the foreseeable future due to declining numbers. What is the difference between an endangered species and a threatened species? An endangered species is one that is in danger of extinction. Throughout all or a significant portion of its range. 
a threatened species is one that is likely to become endangered in the foreseeable future due to declining numbers. How is it determined that a species is endangered? This determination is a complex process that has no set of fixed criteria that can be applied consistently to all species. The known number of living members in a species is not the sole factor. A species with a million members known to be alive but living in only one small area could be considered endangered, whereas another species having a smaller number of members but spread out in a broad area, would not be considered so threatened. Reproduction data The frequency of reproduction, the average number of offspring born the survival rate, etc. enter into such determinations. In the United States, the director of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Within the Department of the Interior, determines which species are to be considered endangered. Based on research and field data from specialists, biologists, botanists, and naturalists. According to the Endangered Species Act of 1973, a species can be listed if it is threatened by any of the following. The present or threatened destruction, modification, or curtailment of its habitat or range. Utilization for commercial, sporting, scientific, or educational purposes at levels that detrimentally affect it. Disease or predation, absence of regulatory mechanisms adequate to prevent the decline of a species or degradation of its habitat, other natural or man-made factors affecting its continued existence. If the species is so threatened, the director then determines the critical habitat, which is the species in habitation areas that contain the essential physical or biological features necessary for the species preservation. The critical habitat can include non-habitation areas, which are deemed necessary for the protection of the species. How is it determined that a species is endangered? This determination is a complex process that has no set of fixed criteria that can be applied consistently to all species. The known number of living members in a species is not the sole factor. A species with a million members known to be alive but living in only one small area could be considered endangered whereas another species having a smaller number of members but spread out in a broad area, would not be considered so threatened. Reproduction data The frequency of reproduction, the average number of offspring born, the survival rate, etc. enter into such determinations. In the United States, the director of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Within the Department of the Interior, determines which species are to be considered endangered. Based on research and field data from specialists, biologists, botanists, and naturalists. According to the Endangered Species Act of 1973, a species can be listed if it is threatened by any of the following. 
the present or threatened destruction, modification, or curtailment of its habitat or range. Utilization for commercial, sporting, scientific, or educational purposes at levels that detrimentally affect it. Disease or predation, absence of regulatory mechanisms adequate to prevent the decline of a species or degradation of its habitat, other natural or man-made factors affecting its continued existence. If the species is so threatened, the director then determines the critical habitat, which is the species in habitation areas that contain the essential physical or biological features necessary for the species preservation. The critical habitat can include non-habitation areas, which are deemed necessary for the protection of the species. Which species have become extinct since the Endangered Species Act was passed in 1973? Nine domestic species have become extinct. Which species have become extinct since the Endangered Species Act was passed in 1973? Nine domestic species have become extinct. Which species have been removed from the endangered species list because they have recovered? Twenty-two species have been removed from the endangered species list because they have recovered. The status of seven species has been changed due to taxonomic revision. New information has been discovered for four other species. Which species have been removed from the endangered species list because they have recovered? Twenty-two species have been removed from the endangered species list because they have recovered. The status of seven species has been changed due to taxonomic revision. New information has been discovered for four other species. What is the status of the African elephant? From 1979 to 1989, Africa lost half of its elephants from poaching and illegal ivory trade. With the population decreasing from an estimated 1.3 million to 600,000. This led to the transfer of the African elephant from threatened to endangered status in October 1989 by the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, cites. An ivory ban took effect on January 18, 1990. Botswana, Namibia and Zimbabwe have agreed to restrict the sale of ivory to a single, government-controlled center in each country. All countries have further pledged to allow independent monitoring of the sale, packing, and shipping processes to ensure compliance with all conditions.
What is the status of the African elephant? From 1979 to 1989, Africa lost half of its elephants from poaching and illegal ivory trade. With the population decreasing from an estimated 1.3 million to 600,000. This led to the transfer of the African elephant from threatened to endangered status in October 1989 by the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, cites. An ivory ban took effect on January 18, 1990. Botswana, Namibia and Zimbabwe have agreed to restrict the sale of ivory to a single, government-controlled center in each country. All countries have further pledged to allow independent monitoring of the sale, packing, and shipping processes to ensure compliance with all conditions. Are tigers in danger of becoming extinct? Tigers are listed as endangered by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the World Conservation Union, IUCN, and are included in the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. They are found in isolated regions of India, Bangladesh, Nepal. Bhutan, Southeast Asia, Manchuria, China, Korea, Russia, and Indonesia. Four subspecies of tiger Balinese tiger, Panthera tigris balica, South China tiger. Panthera tigris amoyensis, Caspian tiger, Panthera tigris vergata, and Javan tiger. Panthera tigris sandiaca have become extinct due to habitat loss, poaching, and overhunting. The Siberian tiger, also known as the Amur tiger, Panthera tigris altaica, is one subspecies that has made a comeback in recent years. Its total worldwide population had dropped to 20 or 30 individuals in 1940 but there are over 500 in the wild today. Since mid-1990s there has been an increase in the poaching of the Bengal tiger. Panthera tigris tigris, since the bones of this subspecies are a valuable commodity on the black market. Tiger bones are used in Chinese medicines. Current population estimates are 470,000 to 690,000 elephants throughout Africa. A newer concern is the reduction of their natural habitat. The human populations are expanding to areas of elephant habitat. New land areas, that were once elephant habitat areas, are now being used for agriculture. Are tigers in danger of becoming extinct? Tigers are listed as endangered by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the World Conservation Union, IUCN and are included in the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. They are found in isolated regions of India, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, Southeast Asia, Manchuria, China, Korea, Russia, and Indonesia. 
Four subspecies of tiger Balinese tiger, Panthera tigris balica, South China tiger. Panthera tigris amoyensis, Caspian tiger, Panthera tigris vergata, and Javan tiger. Panthera tigris sandiaca, have become extinct due to habitat loss, poaching, and overhunting. The Siberian tiger, also known as the Amur tiger, Panthera tigris altaica, is one subspecies that has made a comeback in recent years. Its total worldwide population had dropped to 20 or 30 individuals in 1940. But there are over 500 in the wild today. Since mid-1990s there has been an increase in the poaching of the Bengal tiger. Panthera tigris tigris, since the bones of this subspecies are a valuable commodity on the black market. Tiger bones are used in Chinese medicines. Current population estimates are 470,000 to 690,000 elephants throughout Africa. A newer concern is the reduction of their natural habitat. The human populations are expanding to areas of elephant habitat. New land areas, that were once elephant habitat areas, are now being used for agriculture. Are turtles endangered? Worldwide turtle populations have declined due to several reasons. Including habitat destruction, exploitation of species by humans for their eggs, leather, and meat, and they're becoming accidentally caught in the nets of fishermen. In particular danger are sea turtles, such as Kemp's Ridley Sea Turtle. Lepidoshellus kempii, which is believed to have a population of only a few hundred. Other species include the Central American river turtle, Dermatemis maywii. The green sea turtle, Chelonia mitas, and the leatherback sea turtle, Dermoshellus coriacea. Endangered tortoises include the ungulated tortoise, Geochelone inifora, the desert tortoise, Gophorus agassizii, and the Galapagos tortoise, Geochelone elephantopus. Are turtles endangered? Worldwide turtle populations have declined due to several reasons. Including habitat destruction, exploitation of species by humans for their eggs, leather, and meat, and they're becoming accidentally caught in the nets of fishermen. In particular danger are sea turtles, such as Kemp's Ridley Sea Turtle. Lepidoshellus kempii, which is believed to have a population of only a few hundred. Other species include the Central American river turtle, Dermatemis maywii. The green sea turtle, Chelonia mitas, and the leatherback sea turtle, Dermoshellus coriacea. Endangered tortoises include the ungulated tortoise, Geochelone inifora, the desert tortoise, Gophorus agassizii, and the Galapagos tortoise, Geochelone elephantopus. When was paper recycling started?
paper recycling was actually born in 1690 in the United States when the first paper mill was established by the Rittenhouse family on the banks of Wissahickon Creek, near Philadelphia. The paper at this mill was made from recycled rags. How much water can the average family in the United States save by? Installing efficient water fixtures and checking regularly for leaks? The average family in the United States would use only 45.2 gallons, 171 liters, of water per day. Saving 24.1 gallons, 91 liters, per day, by installing more efficient water fixtures and checking for leaks. This reduces daily per capita water use by 35%. How does a mastodon differ from a mammoth? Although the words are sometimes used interchangeably. The mammoth and the mastodon were two different animals. The mastodon seems to have appeared first, while a side branch may have led to the mammoth. The mastodon lived in Africa, Europe, Asia, and North and South America. It appeared in the Oligocene epoch, 25 to 38 million years ago. And survived until less than 1 million years ago. It stood a maximum of 10 feet, 3 meters, tall and was covered with dense woolly hair. Its tusks were aligned straight forward and were nearly parallel to each other. The mammoth evolved less than 2 million years ago and died out about 10,000 years ago. It lived in North America, Europe, and Asia. Like the mastodon, the mammoth was covered with dense, woolly hair. With a long, coarse layer of outer hair to protect it from the cold. It was somewhat larger than the mastodon, standing 9 to 15 feet, 2.7 to 4.5 meters. The mammoth's tusks tended to spiral outward, then up. The gradual warming of Earth's climate and the change in Environment were probably primary factors in the animal's extinction. Early man killed many of them as well, perhaps hastening the process. Which species have become extinct since the Endangered Species Act was passed in 1973? Nine domestic species have become extinct. How much newspaper must be recycled to save one tree? One thirty-five to forty foot, ten point six to twelve meter. Tree produces a stack of newspapers 4 feet. 1.2 meters, thick, this much newspaper must be recycled to save a tree. How is it determined that a species is endangered?
This determination is a complex process that has no set of fixed criteria that can be applied consistently to all species. The known number of living members in a species is not the sole factor. A species with a million members known to be alive but living in only one small area could be considered endangered, whereas another species having a smaller number of members but spread out in a broad area, would not be considered so threatened. Reproduction data The frequency of reproduction, the average number of offspring born, the survival rate, etc. enter into such determinations. In the United States, the director of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service within the Department of the Interior, determines which species are to be considered endangered. Based on research and field data from specialists, biologists, botanists, and naturalists. According to the Endangered Species Act of 1973, a species can be listed if it is threatened by any of the following. The present or threatened destruction, modification, or curtailment of its habitat or range. Utilization for commercial, sporting, scientific, or educational purposes at levels that detrimentally affect it. Disease or predation, absence of regulatory mechanisms adequate to prevent the decline of a species or degradation of its habitat other natural or man-made factors affecting its continued existence. If the species is so threatened, the director then determines the critical habitat, which is the species in habitation areas that contain the essential physical or biological features necessary for the species preservation. The critical habitat can include non-habitation areas which are deemed necessary for the protection of the species. How did the dodo become extinct? The dodo became extinct around 1,800. Thousands were slaughtered for meat, but pigs and monkeys, which destroyed dodo eggs, were probably most responsible for the dodo's extinction. Dodos were native to the Mascarene Islands in the central Indian Ocean. They became extinct on Mauritius soon after 1680 and on. Reunion about 1,750. They remained on Rodriguez until 1800. What natural resources are saved by recycling paper? One ton. 907 kilograms of recycled waste paper would save an average of 7,000 gallons, 26,460 liters of water, 3.3 cubic yards, 2.5 cubic meters of landfill space, 3 barrels of oil, 17 trees, and 4,000 kilowatt-hours of electricity enough energy to power the average home for six months. It would also reduce air pollution by 74%. What is the greenhouse effect?
the greenhouse effect is a warming near-Earth surface. That results when Earth's atmosphere traps the sun's heat. The atmosphere acts much like the glass walls and roof of a greenhouse. The effect was described by John Tyndall, 1820 to 1893, in 1861. It was given the greenhouse analogy much later in 1896 by the Swedish chemist Svante Arrhenius, 1859 to 1927. The greenhouse effect is what makes the earth habitable. Without the presence of water vapor, carbon dioxide, and other gases in the atmosphere, too much heat would escape and the earth would be too cold to sustain life. Carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and other greenhouse gases absorb the infrared radiation. Rising from the earth and hold this heat in the atmosphere instead of reflecting it back into space. In the 20th century, the increased buildup of carbon dioxide. Caused by the burning of fossil fuels, has been a matter of concern. There is some controversy concerning whether the increase noted in the earth's average temperature is due to the increased amount of carbon dioxide and other gases, or is due to other causes. Volcanic activity, destruction of the rainforests, use of aerosols, and increased agricultural activity may also be contributing factors. Why did dinosaurs become extinct? There are many theories as to why dinosaurs disappeared from Earth about 65 million years ago. Scientists debate whether dinosaurs became extinct gradually or all at once. The gradualists believe that the dinosaur population steadily declined at the end of Cretaceous period. Numerous reasons have been proposed for this. Some claim the dinosaurs' extinction was caused by biological changes that made them less competitive with other organisms. Especially the mammals that were just beginning to appear. Overpopulation has been argued. As has the theory that mammals ate too many dinosaur eggs for the animals to reproduce themselves. Others believe that disease everything from rickets to constipation wiped them out. Changes in climate, continental drift, volcanic eruptions, and shifts in Earth's axis. Orbit and slash or magnetic field have also been held responsible. The catastrophists argue that a single disastrous event caused the extinction not only of the dinosaurs but also of a large number of other species that coexisted with them. In 1980, American physicist Luis Alvarez, 1911 to 1988, and his geologist son Walter Alvarez, 1940, proposed that a large comet or meteoroid struck Earth 65 million years ago. They pointed out that there is a high concentration of the element iridium in the sediments at the boundary between the Cretaceous and Tertiary periods. Iridium is rare on Earth, so the only source of such a large amount of it had to be outer space. This iridium anomaly has since been discovered at over 50 sites around the world. In 1990, tiny glass fragments, which could have been caused by the extreme heat of an impact, were identified in Haiti.
a 110 mile, 177 kilometer, wide crater in the Yucatan Peninsula, long covered by sediments. Has been dated to 64.98 million years ago, making it a leading candidate for the site of this impact. A hit by a large extraterrestrial object, perhaps as much as 6 miles. 9.3 kilometers wide would have had a catastrophic effect upon the world's climate. Huge amounts of dust and debris would have been thrown into the atmosphere. Reducing the amount of sunlight reaching the surface. Heat from the blast may also have caused large forest fires. Which would have added smoke and ash to the air. Lack of sunlight would kill off plants and have a domino-like effect on other organisms in the food chain, including the dinosaurs. It is possible that the reason for the dinosaurs' extinction may have been a combination of both theories. The dinosaurs may have been gradually declining, for whatever reason. The impact of a large object from space merely delivered the final devastating blow. The fact that dinosaurs became extinct has been cited as proof of their inferiority and that they were evolutionary failures. However, these animals flourished for 150 million years. By comparison, the earliest ancestors of humanity appeared only about 3 million years ago. Humans have a long way to go before they can claim the same sort of success as the dinosaurs. Is ozone beneficial or harmful to life on Earth? Ozone, a form of oxygen with three atoms instead of the normal two, is highly toxic. Less than one part per million of this blue-tinged gas is poisonous to humans. In Earth's upper atmosphere, stratosphere, it is a major factor in making life on Earth possible. About 90% of the planet's ozone is in the ozone layer. The ozone belt shields the Earth from and filters the excessive ultraviolet UV, radiation generated by the sun. Scientists predict that a diminished or depleted ozone layer could lead to increased health problems for humans. Such as skin cancer, cataracts, and weakened immune systems. Increased UV can also lead to reduced crop yields and disruption of aquatic ecosystems, including the marine food chain. While beneficial in the stratosphere, near ground level it is a pollutant that helps form photochemical smog and acid rain. How much paper is recycled in the United States? In 2008, 43 million tons, or 56%, of all paper used was recovered for recycling. This amounts to 340 pounds of paper for every man, woman, and child in the United States. When offered a choice between plastic or paper bags for your groceries, which should you choose? The answer is neither. 
Both are environmentally harmful and the question of which is the more damaging has no clear-cut answer. 12 million barrels of oil, a non-renewable resource, are required to produce 100 billion plastic bags. Plastic bags degrade slowly in landfills and can harm wildlife if swallowed. And producing them pollutes the environment. In contrast, 35 million trees are cut down to produce 25 million brown paper. Bags accompanied by air and water pollution during the manufacturing process. Although each can be recycled. The EPA estimates that only 1% of plastic bags and 20% of paper bags are recycled. Instead of choosing between paper and plastic bags, bring your own reusable canvas or string containers to the store. And save and reuse any paper or plastic bags you get. What are the components of smog? Smog, the most widespread pollutant in the United States, is a photochemical reaction resulting in ground level ozone. Ozone, an odorless, Tasteless gas in the presence of light can initiate a chain of chemical reactions. Ozone is a desirable gas in the stratospheric layer of the atmosphere. But it can be hazardous to health when found near Earth's surface in the troposphere. The hydrocarbons, hydrocarbon derivations and nitric oxides emitted from such sources as automobiles are the raw materials for photochemical reactions. In the presence of oxygen and sunlight, the nitric oxides combine with organic compounds, such as the hydrocarbons from unburned gasoline, to produce a whitish haze, sometimes tinged with a yellow-brown color. In this process, a large number of new hydrocarbons and oxyhydrocarbons are produced. These secondary hydrocarbon products may comprise as much as 95% of the total organics in a severe smog episode. How much water does the average family in the United States use per day? The average family in the United States uses 69.3 gallons, 262 liters, of water per day. This includes showers, toilets, faucets, dishwashing, clothes washing, faucets, and other uses. Which species have been removed from the endangered species list because they have recovered? Twenty-two species have been removed from the endangered species list because they have recovered. The status of seven species has been changed due to taxonomic revision. New information has been discovered for four other species. What is the pollutant standard index? The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the South Coast Air Quality Management District of El Monte. K. 
California, devised the pollutant standard index to monitor concentrations of pollutants in the air and inform the public concerning related health effects. The scale measures the amount of pollution in parts per million, and has been in use nationwide since 1978. What is the Kyoto Protocol? The Kyoto Protocol was an international summit held in Kyoto, Japan. In December 1997, its goal was for governments around the world to reach an agreement regarding emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. The Kyoto Protocol called for the industrialized nations to reduce national emissions over the period 2008 to 2012 to 5 percent below the 1990 levels. The protocol covers these greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. Other chemicals such as hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorocarbons, and sulfur hexafluoride were to be added in subsequent years. What is the difference between an endangered species and a threatened species? An endangered species is one that is in danger of extinction. Throughout all or a significant portion of its range. A threatened species is one that is likely to become. Endangered in the foreseeable future due to declining numbers. What products are made from recycled plastic? A new clothing fiber called Fortral EcoSpun is made from recycled plastic soda bottles. The fiber is knit or woven into garments such as fleece for outerwear or long underwear. The processor estimates that every pound of Fortral EcoSpun fiber results in 10 plastic bottles being kept out of landfills. Is washing dishes by hand better for the environment than using an automatic dishwasher? Dishwashers often save energy and water compared to hand washing. Depending on the brand, dishwashers typically consume 7.5 to 12 gallons. 28 to 45 liters of water per normal wash. Hand washing a day's worth of dishes may use up to 15 gallons, 57 liters of water. One university study found that dishwashers consume about 37% less water than washing by hand. Several steps can be taken for additional energy savings when using a dishwasher. The setting on a home's water heater can be turned down to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. 49 degrees Celsius, if the dishwasher has a booster heater. While some machines feature a no-heat, air-dry setting. Simply opening the door after the final rinse to let the dishes air dry will save energy.
What are some of the accomplishments achieved in reducing air pollution since the Clean Air Act was passed in 1970? One of the goals of the EPA was to set national air quality standards for six common air pollutants carbon monoxide, lead, nitrogen dioxide, ozone, particulate matter, and sulfur dioxide. Since passage of the Clean Air Act in 1970, the amount of these six pollutants in the air has decreased by more than 50%. Other accomplishments are, the reduction by nearly 70% of air toxics from large industrial sources. Chemical plants, petroleum refineries, and paper mills. New cars are more than 90% cleaner production of most ozone-depleting chemicals has ceased. How can plastics be made biodegradable? Plastic does not rust or rot. This is an advantage in its usage. But when it comes to disposal of plastic the advantage turns into a liability. Degradable plastic has starch in it so that it can be attacked by starch-eating bacteria to eventually disintegrate the plastic into bits. Chemically degradable plastic can be broken up with a chemical solution that dissolves it. Used in surgery, biodegradable plastic stitches slowly dissolve in the body fluids. Photodegradable plastic contains chemicals that disintegrate. Over a period of 1 to 3 years when exposed to light. One quarter of the plastic yolks used to package beverages are made from a plastic called e -colid, Which is photodegradable. How do chlorofluorocarbons affect Earth's ozone layer? Chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, are hydrocarbons, such as freon. In which part or all of the hydrogen atoms have been replaced by fluorine atoms? These can be liquids or gases are non-flammable and heat-stable, and are used as refrigerants, aerosol propellants, and solvents. When released into the air, they slowly rise into Earth's upper atmosphere, where they are broken apart by ultraviolet rays from the sun. Some of the resultant molecular fragments react with the ozone in the atmosphere reducing the amount of ozone. The CFC molecules chlorine atoms act as catalysts in a complex set of reactions that convert two molecules of ozone into three molecules of ordinary oxygen. This is depleting the beneficial ozone layer faster than it can be recharged by natural processes. The resultant hole lets through more ultraviolet light to Earth's surface and creates health problems for humans. Such as cataracts and skin cancer, and disturbs delicate ecosystems, for example. Making plants produce fewer seeds. In 1978 the US government banned the use of fluorocarbon aerosols. And currently aerosol propellants have been changed from fluorocarbons to hydrocarbons, such as butane.
What is the status of the African elephant? From 1979 to 1989, Africa lost half of its elephants from poaching and illegal ivory trade. With the population decreasing from an estimated 1.3 million to 600,000. This led to the transfer of the African elephant from threatened to endangered status in October 1989 by the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, cites. An ivory ban took effect on January 18, 1990. Botswana, Namibia and Zimbabwe have agreed to restrict the sale of ivory to a single, government-controlled center in each country. All countries have further pledged to allow independent monitoring of the sale, packing, and shipping processes to ensure compliance with all conditions. Are turtles endangered? Worldwide turtle populations have declined due to several reasons. Including habitat destruction, exploitation of species by humans for their eggs, leather, and meat and they're becoming accidentally caught in the nets of fishermen. In particular danger are sea turtles, such as Kemp's Ridley sea turtle, Lepidoshellus kempii, which is believed to have a population of only a few hundred. Other species include the Central American river turtle, Dermatemis mewii, the green sea turtle, Chelonia mitas, and the leatherback sea turtle, Dermochelis coriacea. Endangered tortoises include the ungulated tortoise, Geochelone inifora, the desert tortoise, Gophera sagacezii, and the Galapagos tortoise, Geochelone elephantopus. <laughs>